Hi friends, welcome to our channel Piping Mantra. Today we are going to discuss about the concept of line or pipe sizing, method to calculate it, various factors affecting it and also the procedure for calculating pressure drop due to friction in piping systems which plays an important role in pipe size decision. So let's get started. Now before proceeding towards actual line size calculation, first we need to learn about these basic terms affecting the line size. The first one is continuity equation. Since the size of pipeline is related to the volumetric flow handled by the pipeline, let us establish a relation between these two through a continuity equation as follows. Q is equals to AV, then Q is equals to pi by 4 d square into V which means q is equals to 4q by 3.14 into v raised to the power 1 by 2. So, to determine the pipe size that is d internal diameter of pipe, we should know volumetric flow q and the velocity v first. From the continuity equation, we can easily conclude that higher the velocity, smaller is the pipe size and hence lower is the pipe cost. But selection of suitable velocity value depends on various factors like pressure drop, the sum of all pressure losses in the system must be less than the pressure available in the supply system. NPSH Pipe size should be such that the NPSH available should be greater than the required. For more details on NPSH, you can refer to our previous video on centrifugal pump piping part 1. I will provide the link in the description box below. Noise In case of pipe carrying compressible loads, high velocities lead to high noises. Pipe Erosion High line velocities lead to high pipe erosions, reducing its lifespan. Water hammer and surge pressures. High line velocities re results in significant increase due to water hammer on surge action. Out of these factors, I cannot emphasize enough on the importance of pressure drop while deciding optimum line size for any service. So now for a while we'll shift our topic slightly and first discuss pressure drop in detail to set a base for the line size calculation. For calculation of pressure drop we first need to understand some terms which will be used in the process. First would be Reynolds number. It is a dimensionless number which is the ratio of inertial and viscous forces governing a flow. Its mathematical formula is 10 raised to power 3 rho v d by mu which is equal to 10 raised to the power 3 Vd by nu mu, where V is velocity of the fluid, D is diameter of pipe, rho is the density of the fluid, mu is the dynamic viscosity of the fluid and nu is the kinematic viscosity of the fluid. With the help of this number, we can categorize fluid flow into three types, that is laminar flow if the Reynolds number is less than 2000. If the Reynolds number is greater than 4000, the flow will be turbulent flow. And if the Reynolds number is between 2000 and 4000, the flow will be transient flow. Second factor is friction factor. The friction factor to be considered depends on the type of the fluid flow. Let's see how. For laminar flow, friction factor can be determined using Poisson's law, which is as follows. F is equals to 64 by RE. For turbulent type of fluid flow, the friction factor does not have any formula, instead it can be determined experimentally and the results can be retrieved using Moody's chart which shows the relationship between Reynolds number, internal diameter and roughness on the inner wall of pipe. For transient flow, there is no method to determine the corresponding friction factor but in such cases, lower limits and upper limits can be decided based on laminar flow and turbulent flow respectively. In general, for design purposes, transient flow can be considered as turbulent flow. Now let's see how above discussed factors are used in calculating pressure drop in straight pipes. The pressure drop in straight pipes is calculated using Darcy's formula which is as follows. Delta P is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 4 FLV square rho by 2 GD which is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 4 FLV square by 2 2g nu d. The above equations are used for gas flows as the pressure drop here is expressed in kg per centimeter square. For liquid flows, pressure drop is expressed in form of head that is h is equals to flv square by 2g d. Since we have learned about pressure drop now, let's go back to our original topic. 
which was line size calculation. Now, while sizing pipelines for water services, the likely increase in the pressure drop with the aging of pipe due to increase in pipe roughness, encrustations of pipe with scale, dirt, foreign matter, etc. should also be considered. It is difficult to identify this increase in pressure drop accurately, but we need to consider an optimum value for sure as it will have adverse effects otherwise. Inadequate allowances result in shortfall in the capacity of pipeline and considering too much allowances will result in substantial increase in piping costs which is undesirable. The allowance to be provided depends on the flowing factors. Size of pipe, quality of water, Proportion of friction drop to system resistance, location of pipe, buried or above ground. Obviously, very big, bigger pipelines would be affected to a lesser extent than the smaller pipelines since friction factor depends on relative roughness and not on absolute one. Unfiltered water, corrosive or erosive water would be far worse than the clean filtered water. So, normally increase in pressure drop is provided in the range of 1.1 to 1.4 times based on actual conditions, but an average of 1.25 times may be considered for average pipe sizes as encountered in process and power plants and reasonably clean water. The procedure for line sizing is to first select a preliminary size that is diameter based on assumed velocity as per below chart and then Examine the suitability of selected size from the point of view of the various system requirements discussed in the starting of this video. Mainly, the available pressure drop should be more than the calculated pressure drop for a particular value of pipe straight length and pipe schedule. You can refer our video on pipe thickness and schedule if you are interested in details on pipe schedule. I will link the videos in the description box below. The smallest pipe size which meets all the system requirements is the optimum size for the intended service. Now as per this procedure we need velocity as a first input. For this we are going to refer the given table for the ranges of suitable velocities corresponding to all the main services. You can refer the table appearing on your screen. Now while selecting a particular velocity value we need to change the flowing guidelines in mind. These are as follows. For a given velocity, the pressure drop varies inversely with the pipe size, so select lower velocities for smaller pipes. When line pressures are low, select low values of velocities to keep pressure drop also low. Conversely, for high pressure lines, high velocities can be considered. For short pipe runs, high velocities can be selected as in such cases, pressure drop is minimal and can be ignored. For superheated steam lines, the upper limit for velocity is selected through noise considerations. So, for outdoor lines, high velocities are acceptable, but for indoor lines, velocities are usually limited to 50 meter per second or less for steam lines. In case of high temperature and high pressure steam piping, pipe expansion will introduce problem of flexibility. Use of high velocity would keep pipe sizes down and minimize flexibility problems but this may create flow induced vibrations. Steam lines for intermittent services can have high velocities as high noises can be tolerated for shorter period of time. In cases where pressure drop is unimportant, velocities can be as high as 75 meter per second to 100 meter per second is acceptable. For exhaust steam lines, high velocities of 100 meter per second are acceptable. Now finally we can see how to calculate the line size. I am going to explain it using an example for better understanding. You can see the question or the problem we are referring to in on your screens. Select pipe size for the following design parameters. Q, let's suppose our liquid flow rate Q is 300 meter Q per hour. Our liquid density rho is 1000 kg per meter cube. Liquid velocity mu is 1 cp or 0.001 kg per meter second. Pipe roughness is 0.4 mm. Pipe schedule is 40 and pipe straight length is 100 meter. The line size to be calculated here is at discharge pipe. In this problem, we will assume fluid velocity first. So, from the given table, we will select or assume fluid velocity to be 2.5 meter per second. So, from continuity equation, D would be 4Q by PI 3600V 
raised to the power 1 by 2 that is d is equals to 4 into 300 by pi into 3600 into 2.5 the whole raised to the power 1 by 2 which gives us 206 mm so now we will select the previous lowest pipe diameter that is d is equals to 203.2 millimeters now the internal cross section area would be a is equals to pi r square so a would be pi into 203.2 by 2 whole square which gives us 032412 meter square now by again using continuity equation we can calculate fluid velocity corresponding to selected diameter in this case the formula becomes v is equals to m nu by 3600a which is equal to 300 by 3600 into 0.032412 is equal to 2.571 meter per second if it is more than the value that we have assumed we have to go for higher diameter now we need to calculate pressure drop at this selected velocity to validate its accuracy for this we need to calculate reynolds number so reynolds number will be selected d into selected v into rho by mu which gives us 521913 now roughness by selected d is 0 0.4 by 203.2 which gives us 0 0.00197 this means the flow in the pipe is turbulent flow so now we need to refer to moody's chart to calculate friction factor refer the chart appearing on your screen from this we can identify friction factor f which is 0 0.024 delta p so the corresponding pressure drop delta p is equals to 10 to the power minus 4 flv square by 2 g nu d is equals to flp by 10000 selected d into v square by 2 g by all this calculation del we'll have delta p as 0 0.3983 kg per centimeter square thus for the selected pipeline 8 inch schedule 40 and 100 meter straight pipe length pressure drop is 0 0.3983 kg per centimeter square if the available pressure drop is more than this value liquid flow is possible so that is it guys i hope you liked the video if you did please hit the like button if you want to see more such videos please hit the subscribe button button and if you want to see a particular video on some particular topics please put that topic in under comment section thank you bye bye